My help come from the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth
And we welcome you this morning to this service of celebration for a life well lived. We trust that today this would be a day where we can reflect, we can rejoice, and we can experience God in an amazing way. This is our prayer over you this morning. God is our refuge and strength. An ever-present help in the time of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquake come and the mountains crumble into the sea. Let the oceans roar and foam. Let the mountains tremble at the water's surge. A river brings joy to the city of our God, the sacred home of the Most High. God dwells in that city. It cannot be destroyed. From the very break of day, God will protect it. The nations are in chaos and the kingdoms crumble. God's voice thunders and the earth melts. The Lord of heaven's army is among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Come, see the glorious work of the Lord. See how he brings destruction upon the world. He causes wars to, the end, to end throughout the earth. He breaks the bow and snaps the spear. He burns the shield with fire. Be still. I know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord of heaven's armies is here among us. The God of Israel is our fortress. Please bow your heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear God, and we bless you for giving us another day. We thank you for the gift of life and the gift of love, the gift of family, Lord. You are quite familiar with why we are here today, and that is to lay to rest the body of our dearly departed Dr. Sean L. Brown. God and Father, there have been many conversations that we have been having with you. And this is multiplied by those who are here, sitting in the front row and way down the aisle and those who are watching online. Many petitions, many questions, dear Father, and we continue to wait on you, Almighty God, for, for you to pour in your grace, for you to pour in your mercy, for you to pour in, dear Father, the answers that we need. We bless you this day. Take us through these proceedings, Lord, but not just today, we anticipate how you would hold us in your hand and you would take us forward because we cannot move without your help. All of our help, it does come from you, Almighty God. So we ask you today that you would have your way in this service, Lord. May your Holy Spirit be present in a powerful way. Again, to bring the grace that is needed, the mercy that is needed, the peace that is needed. Thank you for your strength, Lord. We, we can't do it without you. And we bless you, dear Father. And we give you honor. In Jesus' name, and we all agree and say, Amen. Amen. Please remain standing. The worship team is going to come and lead us in singing of two songs. As much as possible, let's open up our lungs and our ears and our voices. And let's honor God this morning. Amazing grace. My chains are gone.
Thank you, congregation. You may be seated. We want to let you know how much we appreciate your presence here today. Your presence here today does signify to us that you are connected in some way to the family of the deceased, and we really do appreciate you. So please feel welcome. We are happy that you are here, and this support is very important for this time and even as we move forward. We will have tributes and presentations in the order that you see them in the program. Scripture reading first by Shalisa Light. That's Romans chapter 8, verses 35 to 39. And after that, we're going to flow straight on to the last flight by Lisa Birch Light. And then the tribute by the girlies. Good morning, everyone. Today's lesson is taken from Romans chapter 8, verses 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, our distress, our persecution, our famine, our nakedness, our peril, our sword? As it is written, for as they say, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, not any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Here ends today's Bible reading.
Good morning. Don't grieve for me, for now I am free. I'm following the path God laid for me. I took his hand when I heard his call. I turned my back and left it all. I could not stay another day to laugh, to love, to work, to play. Tasks left undone must stay that way. I found the peace at the end of the day. If my parting has left a void, then fill it with remembered joy. A friendship shared, a laugh, a kiss. Ah, yes, these, two, these things too I will miss. Be not burdened with times of sorrow. I wish you sunshine of tomorrow. My life's been full, I've savored much. Good friends, good times, a loved one's touch. Perhaps my time seem all too brief. Don't lengthen it now with undue grief. Lift up your heart and share with me. God wanted me now, he set me free. Good morning. For those of you who were privileged enough to have heard my matron of honor speech at Kimani and Shawnell's wedding, you know you are in for a treat with part two. God sent a chubby little angel who was always smiling to bless the lives of Yucha and Reynolds back in 1988. Her older sister Lisa remembered her being a very quiet baby whom she enjoyed feeding and rocking to sleep and taking for walks in the yard. She was a very obedient child who never kept bad company and had very pleasant friends. Those are not my words, those are her mother's. <laughs> Most people who met Chanel in her school days wondered if she had two mothers, only to learn of the close relationship she had with the strong women who raised her, her mother Uter and Auntie Pet. As a student who was always punctual, always first in class, and with a spotless behavioral record, it was only fitting she was given the title of head girl at Grisette's Primary School, where she participated in many activities, including netball, where she was legendary. Her journey to greatness continued when she was the top girl at Grisette's and entered the Crumpton Street gates, which led to the best secondary school education Barbados had to offer at Harrison College. It was there Laura and I met Chanel on our first day in first form at lunchtime, and Kalila, who was also bright-eyed and, and full of wonder in first form. Though not in the same school year, we also met Anik and Rhea. Few men know that the gorgeous, lean physique she naturally had nurtured great athletic potential. She thought with this fresh start that she could hide in the crowd, but her netball skills preceded her and she was called out by our PE teacher at the time during the first class since her former coach had already bragged about her skills. When we were introduced to new field events for natural, her natural gifts came out. In first form, she was high jumping and throwing discus at division one standard, thus making the inter-school sports team. However, my best friend who was determined to retire her sports career at primary school, complained of a back injury during both qualifying days for those events. Her academic brilliance continued throughout Harrison College and we, Chanel, Kalila, Laura, and myself, chose to go to the Barbados Community College instead of Sixth Form, where we would meet Nicole. Good times, liming in the strike zone, new friends, new bonds. While at BCC, Chanel introduced me to a young man in 2005 who would later become my husband. She was awarded a Barbados exhibition and matriculated into medicine at UE Mona. At this time, Sunita entered our lives officially. We had the time of our lives during university. The friendships we formed were lifelong bonds. 
Sean set the bar high when it came to studying. She would sit on her bed or in a chair in the common room of her flat and read huge textbooks cover to cover like a storybook, only stopping to eat. We had so many fun times at Mona, adventures both on and off campus. In our first year, our brave friends, except Annie Can I, decided a hike up the Blue Mountains organized by our hall was a good idea. From my face, I'm sure you can tell that was not the case. It was freezing and they almost turned back at the first rest stop, but they made it, thank God. And you may see a few pictures of that during, their, during the slideshow. Our return to Barbados to complete our clinical years made our bonds as friends and colleagues even stronger. But there was one connection that began to even rival mine and Chanel's, and that was with a tall, handsome young man with a swimmer's build that caught her eye in the student's lounge. But you shall hear lots more about that love story later. Chanel and I might as well have been born, born sisters because since September 1999, we did almost everything together and were in the same classes and groups until we chose different specialties of medicine to pursue. We made sure we completed our Doctors of Medicine together, though, and that was along with our motivator, Sunita. We got married one year apart. We had children five months apart. We did everything together. I've had my own struggles, and we struggled together. Chanel taught me to appreciate the simplicity of life and how to change the way I viewed obstacles. She motivated me, advised me, loved me, saved my life on occasion, and showed me that devotion, what devotion truly meant. Sharing this young motherhood journey with our closest friends made it just a little less disastrous, and it didn't hurt that we had our personal, own personal pediatrician on call at all times, even in Canada. Her love and dedication to her family and friends was unmatched. Her niece, Shalisa, grew up very closely with Shawnee. She pushed her to achieve excellence and played a vital role in getting her cake business off the ground with pushing orders. I don't know how many of y'all have gotten the WhatsApps, but Shauna really pushed. Shalisa will miss being able to call her auntie for words of advice or assistance in making life decisions. But Shalisa, you have gained a whole heap of aunties that you can call. These words are from the members of the girlies, from Anique. After 16 years of sisterhood, Sean's memory will live on through me by remembering the way that she encouraged us to appreciate what we have. Sean was the rational one and often spearheaded many of our more adult conversations, from money to dealing with conflict to skincare. Sean will always be an elegant beauty with a peaceful heart, but a strong will and drive. I will miss you. Nicole said that 18 years ago, we met at BCC, and little did we know that when we went to Jamaica, we would become the quartet, also known as the Braids Crew. Sean, you were my funniest and most rational friend, always down to have a good time. The song Stucky and the dance will never be the same. I will truly miss you. Love always, Nick. Sunita, I always admired Sean's ability to stick to the plan throughout medical school and adulthood. Once it was in the plan, it would be achieved. She was always driven and self-motivated and never needed us to motivate her or help her make a decision. And I always admired that. For me though, what would be missed the most is her ability to calm me when I'm overwhelmed. By the end of the conversation, I would have walked away with a whole different perspective and be 80% calmer. Laura simply said, since age 11, Shana has been calm, methodical, and goal-oriented, but beyond that, a trustworthy friend. She has been a mentor, an inspiration, and a sister to me. From Kalila, Sean was a true gem of a human being. We became friends from AHC days, with our bond growing stronger when we trekked to Jamaica together for our medical studies. It so happened we would become flatmates on hall. We laughed together, cried together, studied together, partied together. She was the calm in the storm of life, a true confidant. She was always readily available to give advice and grounded me when I couldn't possibly see a way out. I'll love her forever. And last but not least, Rhea. A picture of elegance in stance, speech, and mannerisms. Chanel reminds me to always be a lady. Her perspective on life 
finds the positive in every scenario, a mantra I can never forget. Lastly, her laugh. It lights up a room. Elegance, perspective, laughter. I will always remember these and smile. I will end by compiling all of the common things her friends and family admired about her. Her beauty, her caring and loving nature, determined, loyal, fun-loving, effortless grace, content, practical, meticulous, mother, wife, daughter, sister, niece, auntie, friend, doctor, colleague. While we may wish that we had more time with her, I am proud, so proud, of the legacy she left in her short 34 years of life. Her professional imprint will live on, and she lived and worked in the purpose with the task assigned to her. You were here, you are still here, in the hearts of your husband and son, in the hearts of your family and friends, in the hearts of your patients and colleagues. You are in the halls of QEH, C8, and NICU, where you taught so many students and junior doctors and assisted with God's work in saving lives. One of our colleagues and friends remarked that through tears and tired hands from bagging, you were part of the reason her child is alive today. You were here. The Girlies has always been a sisterhood that many admired but few understood. We are over the top at our core and proud of it. One of Chanel's favorite shows was Friends, and I invite you to see our tribute of fun, laughter, silliness, dancing, and most of all, love. Thank you so much for your contributions this morning, the lessons as well as the tributes paid. Um, little did I know that at this stage of my life I would be looking into the eyes of so many people that came across my path, whether it was at the aquatic center or whether it was the schools that my children attended, the schools that my children attended, running track or swimming in the pool. Fantastic job, girlies. We heard about you before we met you. And we continue. When you say we, the Ellerton Wesley Holiness Church is a church that have embraced this family for some time. And we are very, very happy that, you know, Dr. Chanel was a part of that family as well. And we're hoping that we touched her life in such an amazing way that her story will continue to live on in the lives of all of us as a church. So thank you, worship team. Reverend Griffith will speak to you a little later. And we just thought that we were privileged today to be a part of presenting to you and leading in this service of thanksgiving. Eulogy was written by Dr. Kamani Brown, her husband, and the presenter of the eulogy, I believe, will step forward right now. It's going to be projected. Immediately after that, thank you, immediately after that, we invite the worship team to come back and sing, lead us into two numbers. I remember the first time I laid eyes on Chanel, it was in 2009, and she had just finished her pre-clean years in Jamaica, and she came back to do her clinical years in Barbados. You know, my first impression was, this young lady is pretty attractive, and she's doing it without a lot of effort, without a lot of makeup, but she's carrying herself well. 
needless to say, I found my way in her life by introducing myself to her a few weeks later and we started to date the following month. I remember telling my one of my friends, or more than one, can't, can't pinpoint how many, but I remember a year into um, our relationship, I remember saying, you know, I think I think this is it for me. I I don't think I'm going to be dating anymore. This is the girl for me. There are a lot of things I admired about Chanel. She always carried herself with pride and dignity. She took pride in her appearance without overdoing it. She was beautiful on the outside and on the inside. I remember there was one time when we first started now, then we started going out. She went to the beach. I wanted to take her on a jet ski. Jet ski guy gave me a price and I was trying to haggle him downwards to something a little bit more reasonable. And Chanel was like, he's trying to make an honest living. You know, okay, man, let's, let's give him the, the asking price. At the time, I was a little upset. But as I, as I grow older, it is, um, she was right, you know. Somebody's trying to make an honest, an honest penny. Should should support that. No. Chanel was kind. She would often try to help out any homeless person that approached her while we were out. She did it a lot of more often than I did. I had my own reservations. She she thought that you know it couldn't hurt. And obviously over time that became a part of who I was and in many ways she, she elevated the person I was. Chanel was also very determined, focused and brilliant. There wasn't much that Chanel set out to do that she did not accomplish. I actually can't think of anything that she set out to do and did not accomplish. I remember there was one, one time in particular, an early memory when she was, when we had um, class at med school um, for the fifth years and fourth years, we were invited to come, but they had to take me back. The fifth years uh, sat in the front, it was a surgery, surgery um, tutorial. The question was asked, and none of the fifth years could, um, could answer it. So, due to fashion in my school in the Caribbean, the, the tutor moved to the back to ask the fourth years to see if any of them could embarrass the fifth years. I remember looking forward straight, not looking back to see who was answering, but I heard this very eloquent, well-spoken answer. And it was, it was all correct what she had said. And I looked back and it was Chanel. I can sit here and I, I can probably talk for hours about how amazing my wife was, how, how beautiful she was, how determined she was, how kind she was, what a good woman she was, what a good mother. She began to be. I, I always told myself, and I told her as well, that you know, you're gonna end up being the, the discipline, disciplinarian because every time Jaheem act, acted up, I would give him the softest spanks ever. And she would often laugh at, laugh at me and say, Kimani, that's not gonna do anything, but you know, a mother's correction is um, second to none. So I always believe she, she, she would have been she would have loved Jaheem fiercely and unconditionally. The love she had for her, for us, Jaheem and myself, cannot be put into words. She did all that she could 
for, for us. There are numerous things I'm going to miss about my wife, Chanel. I'm going to miss her touch. I'm going to miss her advice. I'm going to miss her company. I'm going to miss the advice, the conversations we had and we exchanged, the ideas, the laughter. The laughter is this one thing I'm going to miss hearing from her. She had the she had the um the most joy joyous laugh that I have ever heard it. It came from her 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 belly. And every time I said something silly, you know, or tried to make her laugh. And I I would hear it and it would light up. It would light up the room. It would light up my day just to hear her hear her laugh and be happy. Still in disbelief. Although I have accepted the harsh reality that is, I am here speaking about you in this in this manner. But you are you are no longer in any pain or any suffering. I take comfort in that. I take comfort in the fact that we we're able to bring a, a wonderful human being into this into this world. Our pride and joy, Jaheem Brown. I take comfort in the fact that you did accomplish a lot more than people your age at this given time. You had a, a pretty full life. You've touched many lives as a pediatrician, as a doctor, as a, a friend, a daughter-in-law, a sister, a sister in life, and, um, and as, as my wife, I'm extremely proud to have, to have met you. To have spent the last 13 years with you with our ups and downs and our our growth it, it was invaluable and I will I will miss you forever I will love you forever my one true forever love Chanel Alicia Brown so we meet again. Hold me close, Lord. Let your love surround me and bring me near. Draw me to your side.
So let it be. Let's give you the opportunity to do that. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Storms will come. In this life, you have storms. But it is so good to know that he who conquered every storm before will be there right on time. Amen? Amen. We invite Dr. Wilmar Brown at this time to come and read. Scripture reading, St. John chapter 14, 1 to 6, immediately after that. We have a sermon presented by our executive counselor of the Elton Wesley Holiness Church, Reverend Hinsley Griffith. Good morning, everyone. The scripture reading will be taken from John 14, verses 1 through 6. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. There ends the reading. Thanks be to God. Good morning. 
So good to see all of you, and from the depths of our entire being, we want to extend our condolences to the family, and certainly that the good Lord, who knows all things, will grant to you every grace that you desire on this occasion. For the next few moments, I want to look at death. Let's face its reality. You know, no matter how prepared you are or we are for the death of a loved one, it still comes as a shock and it hurts very deeply. When a young person is suddenly removed from family and friends and loved ones, at a takeoff point in her life. It presents a great challenge to all and sundry, such as the case today with 34-year-old Dr. Sonnet Chanel Alicia Brown, who departed from us unannounced, leaving behind a trail of unanswered questions and at the same time throwing many relatives and friends into shock and sorrow and sadness. This painful time brings into sharp focus that youth is no guarantee of long life. And therefore, such a reality should register in our minds what Psalm 103, verse 15 to 17 said. As for man, his days are like grass, like a flower of the field, so he flourishes, for the wind passes over it and it is no more. And its place is no longer. There are several things in life that can be ignored, but death is not one of them. It is, it is mankind's current constant companion. According to Ecology Global Network, 55.3 million people are taken out of this world by the icy hands of death every year. Death has been able to, quote unquote, live for centuries, and no human being has been able to, quote unquote, kill it. It takes the breath away from the biggest and smallest, richest and poorest, strongest and weakest, powerful and powerless. It does not entertain friends or favorites, nor does it give preferential treatment to those who are famous or infamous. Day after day, week after week, month after month, this elusive enemy has successfully entered the domain of many families, fatally assaulting loved ones and never spending one day in solitary confinement. One thing is certain, this merciless monster is coming for me, for you, and I can't avoid it, nor can you. The Holy Bible infers that in mankind's lifetime, he will have several enemies, some of which he may be able to destroy, but death is not one of those foes he has the power to eliminate. A brief look at this mysterious monster which many over the centuries have vainly tried to describe will occupy our attention just for the next few moments. There is a narrative in the Holy Bible that grips me more than the life, that, grips, that does not grip me more than the life of a man called Job, whose intimate relationship with God was strong, his integrity was extremely powerful. His humility shone like a beacon in the midst of the dense darkness that pervaded his society in his day. He had a flawless character, some fine children, favorable capital, and a strong family commitment. He was the chief justice in his country. Arabia, a social activist, philanthropist, lover of young people, counselor, educator, and highly respected by people of all classes across the then known world. 
One day, all ten of his grown children died suddenly in a tragic incident. He buckled under the weight of the sudden news. It was too much for him. Then he gradually caught himself from his feeble position. He could not explain it. But certainly he was able to bring a perspective to it eventually. He said, I came into the world with nothing and the Lord chose to give me all that I possess, including my children. For him, for him, it was a reflection of God choosing to give him the gift of his children. He said, the Lord give him. And therefore, cherishing the memory of such gifts must always be kept in view. What great investment the Lord has placed inside of them. And Chanel, we must say amen to that. Joe went on to tearfully say, I know at some time he will take them away from me. And the time has come. He used the expression, the Lord has taken away. He has chosen to take back his gift because it was his in the first place. That final verse in the book of Job attributed to his name, Job, in verse 1, verse 22, sharpened my focus and gave me hope. I hope it does for you as well as family members. Job said, in these words, he said, Job did not sin. I did not sin, nor did I blame God with any wrongdoing. You see, when death strikes, the emotional paralysis that occurs in the lives of individuals cannot be articulated in words. I have witnessed some of the toughest and strongest of individuals collapse emotionally under the power of the sting of death. In their moments of distress, they sometimes did not say things that were consistent with their character. Physically, I've also observed individuals who crumble under the weight of death when it struck family and friends. Some have had to get medical attention as a result. The denial, confusion, forgetfulness, intrusive thoughts, fears, anxiety are just a few of the offshoots that frequently assault the mind when death comes or makes its presence felt. The social impact is not always an easy thing with which to grapple when death pounces on a cherished individual. The social disconnect from mother and father and spouse and children and siblings and colleagues and friends and others with whom intimate relationships were forged over an extended period of time cannot be measured by any stretch of the imagination. Spiritually, Many a religious person's stability is not only shaken, but also shattered, as God is sometimes blamed for the death of their cherished loved ones. I remember a young man who was extremely angry with God when his father, a young clergyman, died. However, over time, this young man was able, as I met him, his perspective came to a place where he understand God really is not responsible. The question that still remains for many is, can this most feared enemy called death, which has and continues to terrify so many over the centuries, be defeated and perhaps destroyed? Job was able to say later in his book, chapter 19, verse 25 through 27, he said, for I know that my Redeemer and Vindicator lives. And at the last, 
He will take his stand upon the earth even after mortal skin is destroyed by death. Yet, from my mortal flesh, immortal flesh, I will see God, who I, even I, will see for myself and my eyes, will see him and not another. If death cannot self-destruct, and no human being has found the key to unlock the mystery of its ability to live on, quote-unquote, with an almost perfect success record, then the question remains, does death have the final say over the destiny of humanity? Among all the religions in the world, past and present, none apart from Christianity has claimed with any confidence that their founder has ever conquered death. One of the most brilliant Jewish scholar, researcher, and leading profile, high profile attorney at law, the Apostle Paul, who confessed that he was once an enemy of Christianity, raised a powerful question in his argument about the issue of death and its demise in his first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15. He implied that with death attacking and defending or defeating mankind, sorry, in all areas of his existence, this life, even with all of its benefits, that we enjoy from time to time. This life offers mountains of misery and hopelessness. Paul went on to add that when Jesus Christ died and rose from the dead, he brought hope, he brought happiness to humanity beyond the power of death and the grave. The founder of Christianity himself rose from the dead and appeared to his disciples for the period of 40 days after the resurrection as evidence of his power over death. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1 and verse 17 and 18, he said to the apostle John on the Isles of Patmos, he said, hi, hey, listen, I died, but see, I'm alive forevermore. And I have the key of absolute control and victory over death and the realm of the dead. No other religious leader has ever been able unquestionably to make such a claim. Death, therefore, for the Christian does not have any final grip on him, her. This last enemy, the Bible says, to be destroyed will not only be able this last enemy, the last enemy to be destroyed, will not be able to do any permanent damage to those who place their faith and confidence in the resurrected power of Jesus Christ. Paul, under inspiration, said, for to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord Jesus Christ. To the gangster on the cross who exercised faith in Jesus Christ, the words from the one who is the resurrection and the life, he heard these words, today you will be with me in paradise. In light, therefore, of what we share today pertaining to death, please make sure, please make sure your ears are attentive to skillful and godly wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, seeking it conscientiously and striving for, its, for it eagerly. Amen. So let it be. May your hearts, therefore, connect with the God of life. And whatever we do here in this life, let us understand we can't fight death. But we have someone who 
who has given us victory over it, over it, the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us connect with him. Amen. Could you stand with me, please, as I pray for, for the family? As you bow your heads. Father, what a pleasure it is to call you Father, because it speaks of the intimacy with which we share. It speaks of the fact that despite all that we may be going through as a loving, caring, compassionate Father, your word says to us that Jesus who walked to face the face of the earth, who suffered so much, who had friends and loved ones, over whom he cried and wept. Only you can understand the depth of the pain that the family is going through today as a result of the loss of Chanel. We think of a husband, Kimani, and son, Jehim. We think of the wider family circle, too many to mention this morning. Whereas we can imagine what they're going through, you alone can understand what they're experiencing. And, oh, Lord, we ask of you in your greatness and your power, in the magnitude and the depth of your love, that you will surround them richly. You would enter into their spirits, into their minds, into their emotions, into their wills, into their bodies, and demonstrate the love that knows no limit. And when the moments of darkness come upon them as they reflect and get flashbacks from time to time, we pray that you will release an abundance of your peace that passes all understanding that secures our hearts and minds through Christ, the resurrected Christ. And we pray today that you would calm their fears and bring them to an understanding that you are not just God, but you are Father, you are a friend, you are a confidant. Walk with them, Father, through this transition period and grant to them the desires of their hearts that they will know that the God who has brought this beautiful gift into the world and has touched the lives of so many people across the world this precious gift. We pray, Father, that upon reflection, they'll be able to say thank you for the exceptional way that her life has impacted the lives of those within her orbit of influence and those outside. And so, Father, we want to thank you if your ears are inclined to our prayers, and we want to thank you for doing great things in this family and in all of us as we embrace the great and wonderful, powerful, effective, and dynamic ministry that Chanel had. Thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Please remain standing for the recessional. Again, we want to thank you so much for coming out. Let's promise each other we're going to keep praying for Jaheem and Kimani and the extended family. 
And our prayer is today that God will continue to bless you. This service will continue in just a few moments at the graveside. Worship team.
Hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will never, neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at the right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forever. For as much as it has pleased our Heavenly Father in his wise providence to take unto himself our beloved Dr. Chanel Brown, we therefore commit her body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God in our Savior, Jesus Christ.
Christ himself and God our Father who loved us and by his grace gave us eternal encouragement and good hope encourage your hearts and strengthen you in every good deed and word may the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times and in everything the Lord be with you all. Amen. 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 The Lord bless you.
after that the, so we're not going to have the physical um, commitment here so you're free to go if you so desire may God bless you as you go. Speak, God. Speak, Lord. 